Good morning all, it's Sunday morning. Uh, week after Passover, so I don't even know what the date is. Probably 23rd, 22nd, I don't know. <clears throat> Early morning out here, got my coffee, listening to the birds, as you can hear them in the background, listening to my pond, just flowing. Beautiful morning, probably about 58, 60 degrees outside. I just want to reflect a bit on the non-duality of the Creator, God, consciousness, whatever you want to call it. It's been about eight years ago when I learned it. And uh, it's really awesome thought when you break it down to what, you know, the non-dualistic approach to the Creator is. Now, that doesn't mean within our realities we don't see dualism. Of course we do, and the choices we make, there is either a good choice or a bad choice. So there is dualism, but not in the not in the parameter of God, but within the choices and stuff that we make here. And this is why you see in so many religions, so many gods and in Gnosticism and in Christianity, they wouldn't say it, but there is. And in Judaism, especially when you get into the Kabbalah, because we're dealing with uh we're dealing with personalities, we're dealing with uh descriptions we're dealing with things that describe certain natures of this ultimate creator. And then, of course, when you read within the Old Testament where it says that God is the creator of good and evil, you know, you have to stop and ponder here. So when you really look at it, and this is very basic, this is very easy, this is nothing dogma this morning. This, like I said, I am not leading you into any dogma or trying to share any quote truth except from what I'm learning and have learned in my past but I want you to remember this right now and I'm going to 1 Corinthians 13 and to me this is not just a chapter of love but this is the chapter that describes who our ultimate creator God being is consciousness whatever and this is his desire for us Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clinging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, Gnostic, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and have, and do I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. So there goes your words. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself and is not puffed up. Does not have rudely, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own and is not provoked. Thinks no evil, does, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believe all things, hopes all things, endure all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. That there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. But we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, when that which is part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. And when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now I see in a mirror, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know that I am that I am known. And now abide faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. I want to concentrate on this. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. Because when I was a child, I had to understand, you know, I had to understand fear. I had to understand not understanding everything because I wasn't ready. Of course, you wouldn't give your child a gun and say, go out in the backyard and shoot a gun without teaching them what to do. Or you wouldn't take a, a torch and give it to a child and say, go outside and start a fire. That's silly. But over time, we learn and we grow and we understand. And the same thing is true with, with our Creator. We go through different developments in our life of understanding of who God is. Some through Christianity, some through Judaism, some through whatever, Mormonism, Jehovah Witnesses, Islam, whatever. It doesn't matter. But there comes to a point when the Creator wants to come to you. You search for him, him, it, she, but it's chasing you. And that's the thing is we have to come to a point in our life when we can be still, silence, 
put away all this dog, you know, put away all of this stuff and receive the true creator, the ultimate purpose of our life, love, consciousness. And when you come to that point, you find that your journey totally changes you. Non-duality is in all the Hindu, Buddhist, all of that. Mystical, Gnostic, it's in all. And it's time that we leave us, leave besides the childish thoughts of God as, an, as a mean God that's going to punish you if you do something wrong or a God that's going to send you to, to hell because you don't believe a certain dogma. It's time we put aside these foolish teachings and receive the one trueness, the one love, the one creator. Have a good Sunday. Think and meditate upon this. Seek let him find you and you find him. And let's put let's put aside childish behavior. Let's put aside let's put, excuse me. Let's put aside the silliness of dogma and fighting over who's right and wrong. And let's join together as nature does. As you see the olive tree, as you see the orange tree, as you see the kumquats, the flowers, all of the flowers in the pond, the birds, they're all one. They're all one. We must be the same way. So have a great Sunday. And thank you. Subscribe, share, and like the video. And let's continue this journey together. Thank you.